Well, I have a lot of work that nobody has seen. Um, the pandemic forced me, first of all, I wasn't coming in at, for many months. I wasn't coming to the studio because with you know my health issues, I was really terrified. Um, so I started thinking about things that I could <clears throat> do at home, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, and I started, one day I was looking, I was, I was cleaning out my closet, you know, that was like a pandemic thing to do. So I looked in my t-shirt drawer and I had a few t-shirts from like marches and things. And I, and I thought, do I want to keep these or I hate to throw them out. So I came up with this idea to take the t-shirt and create one of the, the um, squiggly patterns that I was using on the blankets and transfer that to the t-shirt and then cut away the negative space. And then I would come into the studio one day a week. My fellow artists were very kind and generous and they would give me that day to come in by myself. And I would dip the t-shirts in plaster and then hang them on the wall. Here's a few of them on the wall. Oh. And after I had done them, and at first they were just white, I painted the wall gray so that there would be you know, a little bit more contrast. And a friend of mine, one of my artist friends, said that it reminded her of the um, ghost bikes where people would, when, when somebody was killed on a bicycle, um, people would paint a bicycle white and they put it out on the street and people would come and decorate it. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Let me try putting flowers on these things and little tags and stuff to kind of give a sense of, um, you know, not names exactly, but just little sense of, of somebody was here kind of thing. As it happens, when I started doing that, the Surfside collapse happened. And then there was the, the wall with all of the flowers and the photos. And it, and it brought me right back to 9-11 when you saw that all over the city. But thinking about when somebody is killed on the highway, for instance, they make like a little, um, a little shrine. And I'm interested in, I don't wanna say death exactly, but just loss. I think of my work a lot in terms of loss, in terms of taking away and something passing in time, time passing. So I made a bunch of these, I only have, those up right now because I'm also doing a project that was originally supposed to happen in 2019. I was chosen to do a project residency for the Deering Estate. And I couldn't do it because of the pandemic and they closed down too. So they very generously extended it. And what I'm doing is working with, um, it, it, when I was researching, I was going through their archives and stuff and I found um, the work of John Kunkel Small, who was a botanist from the New York Botanical Society. And he became good friends with Charles Deering. Um, they were both early conservationists um, and interested in native plants. And, and uh, John Kunkel Small actually wrote a book called um, uh, Florida, um, I think it's Paradise to Sahara or something like that. It, he, he talked about how the wetlands had to be uh, protected way back in, in, the, in the 19-teens, you know? And he would go around the, the, um, the whole South, Southeast United States, but particularly in Florida, to document all of the native plants. And he has hundreds of photographs that he took. And so he helped Charles Deering to landscape both of his properties. He, he, Charles Deering had a property on, um, in Buena Vista first. And then he felt like Miami was encroaching on it. It was too busy and so forth. So he bought the, the land in, Cut, in Cutler Ridge. And, um, and both of those, John Puckle Small helped him to landscape and, you know, and, and, and brought 
some palms and things, you know, all kinds of different things. So there are all these wonderful photographs. So you can, you can get a scan of them from the Florida Memory uh, Project in Tallahassee, and you can use them as long as you give them proper credit. So I've been doing silk screens with them. I, cre I, I made a half tone of each one and expanded the scale. And I'm making silk screens of some of the photographs. And there's going to be a show at the Daring Estate next year. 